My name is Richard Hindley, and I'm just going to run through a summary of, of the decision making um, and the treatment options for men with symptomatic benign prostatic enlargement. Uh, this is taken from the helpful uh, algorithm or, or format from the Prostate Matters website. Um, I realised that, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I haven't introduced myself, I'm Richard Hindley, consultant urologist and visiting professor at the University of Winchester. Um, I was also chair of the Get It Right First Time Academy for Men with BPH, and this was a document that was published in January of this year, designed to help um, hospitals, clinicians, managers uh, plan and introduce new these new treatments um, into the portfolio of options, uh, expanding number of options available for men with this very common condition. Um, so, because at the moment, certainly in the NHS, there is a bit of a, a postcode lottery, really, in terms of access to the various treatments. Historically, uh, we've had medication and we've had a, an operation called the TURP procedure. Um, and it's been a bit of a, uh, essentially, you know, a, a one, one tool for all procedures, whereas now we really do have a, a toolbox of treatment options uh, or a portfolio of options. Uh, that are available, which I think has to be a good thing for men. There's unlikely ever to be a single procedure which does everything for everybody, um, because there's a, a trade-off often in terms of how much tissue you're removing and, um, and, and, and the risk of side effects associated with the treatment. And typically, those side effects are often around um, sexual function and, and urinary control. There, are some, there can be problems with bleeding and infection early on after the procedures, but they can be dealt with and treated. So we really do tend to focus on the long term um, possible complications and that, 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 that men are really thinking about that when they're making their decisions about which of the options that they should go for. In terms of deciding, um, men will have tried a tablet or tablets or, or, and, and, and had some benefit or not got on with them or, or are keen to bypass medication because some of the minimally invasive treatment options now available have a better side effect profile. They're less likely to cause side effects than the medication. But really, the an understanding of the, the pro having ruled out the possibility of prostate cancer with PSA testing and if appropriate an MRI, um, it's very important to, to know the, the gland volume. And also, we would be asking you to complete a, a symptom questionnaire or symptom questionnaires about how troublesome the symptoms are and maybe questions about sexual function as well so that we can help inform you and help with that discussion about which option would be the most appropriate. So gland volume is really important with decision making. That can be measured a number of different ways. One of them is an ultrasound probe in your bottom or an abdominal ultrasound or, or an MRI scan. With smaller glands, uh, you know, different treatment options would be appropriate when compared with, with bigger glands. Uh, on the prostate matters um, decision making chart, um, we, we split them up into gland volumes less than 40 mils then gland volumes 40 to 80 mils, 80 to 100, and, and 100 to 150, and then for very big prostate glands, over 150 mils. And this is a guide. These aren't hard and, you know, these aren't sharp lines in the sand. Um, you know, if you've got a 101 mil gland, you shouldn't be having X, Y, or Z, but it's a guide to help inform around the decision-making. And also some of the men that have prostate surgery will be catheterized and clearly they are at the more severe end of the spectrum if they've presented with a condition called retention of urine. So men with severe symptoms with terrible frequency getting up at night urgency and poor flow, if their symptoms are terrible or they've got a catheter then we, we tend to need a, a slightly bigger procedure um, to, to deal with that problem and, and the minimally invasive options may not be so suitable. So the next step up, it, you know, is from medication is usually a minimally invasive intervention. But for some men, they, they, they might be better going straight up to a, a laser procedure, for example, because they've got a very big gland, severe symptoms with or without a catheter. There are a, a, a raft of minimally invasive surgical treatments, um, Urolift, uh, Resume, prostate artery embolization, 
Um, ITIND is also coming along uh, and there will be others that follow. The a knowledge of the prostate volume is really important. Most of these procedures are performed by a urologist, which means we access the prostate via the, the urethra through the penis um, using a telescope and doing things under vision. Um, the other the other ways of, um, uh, of accessing would be via blood vessels, which is the, for the radiology uh, prostate artery emb embolization procedure. This is done by an interventional radiologist. Um, and, and this technique, I think, is good for men with recurrent bleeding, for example, or a very big prostate gland, or for men who are very keen to um, avoid any instrumentation of the urethra. It can also be performed under local anesthetic. Uh, this is the this is also the case for the, the Eurolift procedure and resume. Each of these procedures has its own pros and cons. Uh, resume might have better durability, but whereas uh, Eurolift uh, has a more immediate effect or impact and, and th there's no necessity for a urethral catheter, for example. But hopefully the Prostate Matters uh, website will help you sort of dig deeper and work through those, those, those treatment options. Um, the next step up would be, uh, you know, laser treatments, and the, typically they fall into either the holmium laser enucleation uh, procedure, which is very good for removing a lot of prostate tissue and particularly good for very big prostate glands. Um, the, the, uh, and so, you know, I think for a man with a very big prostate gland, it, it's probably the, the, the number one choice. The slight trade-off, particularly in older men, is that there is a risk of urinary incontinence after the procedure. That's very low. But a significant in the longer term, but a significant proportion of men have some stress urinary incontinence early on in the first few weeks and perhaps months. The green light laser procedure is certainly going to remove more prostate tissue than resume, uh, uh, probably a similar amount of prostate tissue to the TURP procedure. Um, it, it's really like a TURP, but a safe sort of Swiss army knife of, of a procedure that, um, that that's quite versatile and it's very good at in patients with an increased risk of bleeding, for example, um, but it won't remove as much prostate tissue uh, as the holmium laser enucleation, although there are different ways of, 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 of using the green light laser. Um, one can try and use it to enucleate tissue, but it, I think it works um, best by vaporizing prostate tissue, removing, removing the tissue by heating up uh, the prostate to very high temperatures over a very small area. Um, there is obviously the TURP procedure. Uh, it's not something that I routinely offer patients. There are scenarios where it might be useful. If you're being offered a TURP procedure, it, it should really be the bipolar TURP procedure. You should be asking about that. Um, there are two ways of doing the TURP and one is safer than the other and the bipolar is the best option. But it would always be worth challenging and asking, what about uh, green light laser, what about Eurolift? You know, please tell me about these other options. I'd like to make an informed decision. Uh, and you know, if, if, if a man in his late 50s uh, has, has got moderate symptoms, doesn't want medication or doesn't get on with medication and has, say, a, a 50 mil prostate gland, you know, he's going to be a prime candidate for a minimally invasive intervention. He won't want any risk of erectile dysfunction. He'll want a very low risk of drier ejaculation and he won't want to have urinary incontinence afterwards. Similarly, uh, an 82 year old with a, a, a 180 mil prostate gland um, may have to accept the trade off with side effects of the homium laser enucleation procedure, but it would certainly because it would certainly be a much safer option when compared, for example, to the TURP procedure where there would be an increased likelihood of bleeding and a longer hospital stay. So, I mean, it's been a bit of a whistle stop tour. Uh, I'm hopeful that is helpful. There are obviously several pages, hundreds of pages on the website, which will help guide you through those, through those various options. But I think that the bottom line is, you know, do, do some of your own research, um, make sure that the, the, we, you, your prostate volume is, is known to the, the clinician looking after you, uh, and, and obviously to have completed the, the various symptom questionnaires. There is, I think, also an, a new kid on the block, if you like, which is aquablation. And not to get you confused, this um, is uh, uh, using a, a water jet uh, with, without heat, essentially, to remove prostate tissue. And this is a new technology. It, it hopefully soon will get full, nice approval. But at the moment, it's still only being offered in, in select centres in, in, in England. It's thought also to be good for very 
for, for the larger prostate glands, it removes a good amount of prostate tissue. It does require an overnight stay where some of the minimally invasive surgical treatments or most of them are day case procedures. So I'm not sure it falls into the category of minimally invasive surgical treatments, but it probably sits alongside the laser treatment options. What's good about it is where, for example, with a, a nucleation technique with the homium laser or, or with a resection with a TURP, the likelihood of dry ejaculation would be at least 50%, uh, if not closer to 100%, uh, whereas with the aquablation procedure, it's much lower at less than 10%. So that, that's, that's the advantage, perhaps in a, a younger man with a very big prostate who, who isn't suitable for a minimally invasive surgical treatment. Uh, I hope that th this was helpful. Um, thank you very much indeed.